Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Happy post-Thanksgiving, Dave. Happy post-Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday shopping, everyone. <laughs> this is This and That. We are going to discuss everything going on in the skating world this week and at the 2021 Ross Telecom Cup, formerly known as the Cup of Russia, but now Russia has 17 events known as the Cup of Russia domestically. Not to get confused. So if you are new here, please subscribe below. It'll always be the Cup of Russia to me. Anyway, Jonathan, you are a naughty, naughty boy this week, okay? I have never been photoshopped in a photo with Tarasova and Arna Sherbakova. The Russian press, you're such a good photo of you. They love to show like my eyes looking like Angelika Krilova, whatever they oh, show man. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they love like to get the right, the right frame, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave, I have to say, because I always love the thumbnails you put together for this and that. Like, it's usually yes. this, like, fun, cropped thing. So when I first saw that photo, I assumed you had done it. No, no, Because no, it no, actually no. followed your, your sort of formula. And then when I realized that they had made it, then I really felt off, even more honored. So, oh, yes. Jonathan, you were <laughs> in the Russian press in such a way. I... <laughs> it's just funny. It's funny to me... Um, but I think our narrative is often pretty consistent on mm -hmm. the show. You know, yes. we're two but people in a subjective sport. We have big opinions. And th although they change from time to time, like certainly very rarely do I have like one moment where I'm sharing something I have not shared before. So it's always interesting that like this would be picked up from that episode out of the blue like that. Well, yeah. So I have a couple comments about that before we go into the actual substance because sports.ru and Sport Express. They will often, on a slower news day, take a quote that we say, or Megan Duhamel says on Twitter, or someone, right? And then they will get like 50,000 comments from all of the Russian skating world, which is frankly freaking hilarious, right? And they also, this week, I made a sarcastic comment about something that wound up being true about a Terry being like in communication with Will Spielbond and Zueva for political reasons, which wound up being correct. But I just took it about the fact that they were in a photo together and it was a news story on sports.ru. Like hilarious, right? Which if you had followed that video, there were many funnier things that they could have gotten everyone's comment on. Like whose egg should Arthur Liu have used? I mean, come on, they could have quoted, like called Tarasova and like, oh, I think the baby should have been. <laughs> and it makes sense. Like a lot of people will read these, these comments back mm -hmm. in these moments and sort of be like, wow, what a weird thing to say. Or wow, Tarasova cares. Or wow, Averbu cares. But you have to realize these, these poor personalities are being like inundated with these random press questions. Like they were- Oh, they love it. A parent of Tarasa yeah. will be like, oh, you're bugging me again. She always gives a quote, okay? Oh, of course, but she's like, I don't know who the hell I'm talking about or what this this is about. Or like, she acts really offended and people are like, Tarasa hates you. The next time I make a video about her commentary online, she shares it on her VK. Page. Yeah, of course. Awesome. She, doesn't know, she doesn't know what these people are asking her about. It's like, all hilarious, but anyway. It's hysterical when you read the press and you have to take it in stride. But Jonathan, they seemed very upset with you because you criticized Daniil Glykenhaus's choreography for Anna Sherbakova and <laughs> Tarasova gave you a tell me please, tell me please, who has the choreography? Jonathan, who has the choreography if not Danny G? These people, All right. these people oh, have the choreography. Should we, go, should we compare lists? Yes, let's compare lists, all right? Yep, okay. All right, I put Lori Nickel. Did you get Lori Nickel on there? Uh, wait, hold on. Lori Nickel, this is in no order, by the way, but she is- Ilya Averbu. Ilya Averbu, he's on it somewhere. Rohit Ward, didn't he make you cry in a bathroom stall once when he was very mean? No, that, to be fair, that was not Rohit, that was Corey Aid. But yes, mm -hmm. Rohit Ward is a choreographer who knows how to listen and respond to the music. He's on the list. I okay. Differently. Okay. I put Sandra Bezik, Kolya Morozov, also, also Gray, Sam also, Schwinard. Didn't make mine. Oh, made mine. I would say he's <laughs> better than Danny G. Okay. okay. Yep. Fair enough. Jeffrey Buttle. <laughs> yes. Stefan and on, he's on mine. Oh, Lombiel, Good choice. Not the, like not so much the Bolero edit this year, but you know what he did with that Michael Jackson really spectacular. You can't hit every time. We're just Marina talking about Dueva. people that. Yep, Marina knows how to listen to music. She's on my- Julie Marcotte, Jonathan, because even though she's not your favorite, I think you'd say she's better than Danny G. Uh, 
I mean, it's all relative. It is all <laughs> relative. Yes, correct. Cindy Stewart, Tom Dixon, Tom Renee Dixon's Roca, online. Renee, Renee Roca, Roca inventor online. of Vicky and Nikki, Christopher Dean, <laughs> Shailen Bourne, also your good friend, Nina Petrenko. I certainly let her uh, know that yes. you're in the Russian press. She's making Great. my new program to Pagliacci this season. Great, yeah. super duper. Doing she, I know Karen she knows Kwan. all about the plot. Oh, okay, okay. Lorna Brown. Okay. Not Hot Sergey and Elena Ilinik. That program they did for Kostrnaya, much better Billie Eilish. Uh, much, last much. Finch. You could see me in a crown. Okay, I mean, okay. iconic, all right? Okay. Tatiana Tarasova herself. I put her down, she knew music. Her? Yes, yes. Benji Schwimmer, allegedly that boy who may have been in Adam's book. I mean, Benji I think. Schwimmer, he made my list. Tatiana Tarasova. Benoit Richaud on a good day. You know, like when he's working with Daisuke, right? Fair enough, anyone when they're Charlie working Charlie White, Daisuke. Abby Lee Miller and Gianna Martello, because frankly, the Russians don't understand the pyramid reference. But if they understood that there was an obese, dance teacher yelling at girls they would be so behind the pyramid and they would love on the outskirts of pittsburgh yeah okay on the outskirts of pittsburgh these very fit dance teacher yelling at young girls and birds and yeah american journalist david lisa and jonathan byer comparing our girls at (laughs) rusalni yes it would be great if they understood the joke it would be much funnier yeah if they did they don't Okay. And really my eight-year-old nephew, because he has- Your some- eight-year-old nephew, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I agree. Basically in agreement here. So here's the thing that's funny, is we've discussed several times on the show that like, yes, we are by our passports, we are two American citizens, <laughs> but it's the first thing people jump to our- It oh, makes a better an- headline. It's an American propaganda. It's an American journalist. And then they start asking me like, what is wrong with Alyssa Liu? And I was like, this has nothing to do with Alyssa Liu. When I did a Russian interview that never was published because I didn't give them anything scandalous and I backed up everything I had to say, so it wasn't interesting for them to pursue it. Um, But they're like, well, you just, you attack young children, these skaters. And I was like, no, I don't. This is not about the skater who I admire and obviously is tremendously talented and is giving the material she has given. I was like, my criticism is with the adult man that's like sort of narrating where choreography is The one who gave truth of a hey, big spender? When she looked like a toddler in tiara? When she literally was a child, yeah. So (laughs) I'm just like, this is an epidemic. And because they have the most consistent skaters in the world and they are the most successful skaters in their discipline right now, they are setting the tone. They Mm. have such great power to, to set the standard of skating. And they have chosen with this choreographer to, to make the statement that the music is not so important to their success. And I think that is important to skating. <laughs> so, and it's not anti-Russian or pro-American as always, I feel the need to reiterate that because again, someone like Tarasova was gonna, a master of music. They're not gonna care. You're gonna say all this thing, they're gonna label you American tomorrow, okay? That's exactly, then- exactly right. Oh, I bet he would never say something negative about American choreography. And I was like, I- Galena no, always loves to do that too. She'll be like, Dave, tell me, how are the American girls doing? And I will go, Galena, tell me please, how Ukraine are doing on the Grand Prix this season? But why does that matter? Like, it's such a weird default to, well, your girls suck. They're not my girls, they're our athletes. This is our sport that we love so much. Like, what does it matter who comes from where? I like the actual discipline, which is why I want to make sure the discipline moves forward the way I would like to see it. Whatever. Oh, please, you're going to be in the press tomorrow. All right. I mean, this is just <laughs> ridiculous. So like, it's just, oh, yeah. Oh, I my mean, God, it's melting. It's, so is mine. I'm in Pennsylvania for Thanksgiving. So I'm just like, and did you see all the athletes just stood there with? They like oh, you're actually eating it, but you can land an axle. I can't land an axle. Just like so the Masvina students, they all ate it too, honey. <laughs> and Michael Marinero, who maybe shouldn't have had it in that moment, but you no, know, maybe not the moment. He's but he likes to pretend he's like the class clown, if I recall mm-hmm. correctly, from Skate Canada. When they filmed something with them for like a reality show thing, he like, they were testing them and he like walked across the ice barefoot and stuff. And he's a clown. Yeah, something is. And he would like whip his skate cards behind him as he threw out for the warm up. And I was like, yeah, I get you think you're funny, but like also th- those will hit someone, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. All right. It is time 
<laughs> for our team to read the update. Jonathan, it was so shocking that I had to print more <laughs> headshots out, okay? We didn't even know, we didn't expect, we didn't anticipate that this could happen. It was a frickin' Rostelecom miracle, only in Mother Russia, okay? Only, yeah. You knew it was gonna give us some sort of shock. All right, number one, you would think it would be Valjeva, but you know what? Hell no, because while Valjeva may prove to Ateri that she is a good coach, do you think that's something she didn't know? <laughs> you think that Ateri Georgievna did not know that she was a good coach? Bullshit, okay, best coach. All right. Okay, okay. Diana Davis lets her know that 50% of her <laughs> is her DNA and that is a winner. Okay, and if you listen to that Ice Dancer's mother, she is absolutely gonna be in the team event. It is fait accompli. And she, Terry is about to be an Olympic champion, mother and coach, which is basically that the half of her is an Olympic champion. Okay, ridiculous. All right. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> in second place, on the second row this week, our world record hover, Ms. Camila Valjeva. All right, best, best. Virtually unbeatable at this point, yeah. She just has to hold on until February, okay? It's Which Camilla against ask. Mother Nature, as is yeah. the case with all Team Two Greens girls. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Third place, Maurice Kavitishvili. <laughs> all right, we thought he was just there for some money, Maybe an extra Prada bag, Louis Vuitton jacket, and a Georgia. Or that bag. one bronze medal at a, at a Europeans. <laughs> now you know, in Russian hierarchy of skating, and really like in, when you get to be a, like a master coach, you know that it's not just how many champions you have; it's how many disciplines you've won in. Marina, you know, Marina, right? Yeah. So, you know, Terry's only had a female champion. She hasn't done well with the men. This gave her a Grand Prix champion in the men's event and in the pairs event this season. And her daughter, the Warsaw Cup champion, she has won four disciplines this season, Jonathan. Okay, yeah. that yeah. is a queen, all right? <laughs> the very loyal Anna Sherbakova. She's hanging on for the Olympics. She's in a new ad for the bank of which Terry gets 40%. Listen, this is a good girl, an Angeloka an angel student, okay? Tarasova and Morozov, they're keeping the hope alive that a Terry can win a gold medal in another discipline. A Katieva, Petrosian, Maya, Hromi. Let me tell you, we had hope for this girl to beat Tuktemisheva. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Missing the triple lots cascade in the short program. This is bullshit, Jonathan Bayer. Now we have to have the injured Alexander Trusova, who is not even skating right now, come back, have, did you see there was a very carefully edited interview thanking her fans, but you never saw her on the ice, but it made you think that she was still in the game, right? It was edited. Mm. Now they are going to have to find a way to get her to land enough quads to screw over Tukdemisheva while public opinion is on Tukdemisheva's side. Oh my God. Okay. Do you know how many quads? Without the quads, they know what her skating skills look like. You think a Terry right. doesn't know? She knows. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> and the problem child, Alyona Kosternaya herself, who recently dyed her hair again. This is Sambo 70. <laughs> what a week, Jonathan. Okay. I'll eat to that. I'll eat. <laughs> and to the people who think that we never talk about Americans. Alyssa Liu, really Arthur Liu, got his own episode of As the Blade Turns. Jonathan, what do you make of this momentous occasion in American skating? I get that so, every time you sort of like throw a little droplet, a little morsel of information on the show, I'm like, well, surely Arthur wouldn't be so silly as to upset the apple cart this close when even though yes, she has would. regressed a smidge, <laughs> She is overall on so much more on track from last year. Like, I think the big picture is right where she was at. And um, gosh, you were right again. And I thought like, what a foolish, I, I don't know. I, I mean, you were talking about like one of the main cells being a pole harness worker. And I was like- No, so apparently Eddie Shipstad is really good on the pole harness. Um, he has like a very light touch, which like there's, 
one of the coaches at the ice house has Instagram videos where he just hangs the kids up in the air. And the parents think like, oh my God, my kid is working on these It's getting jumps. better. Yeah, yeah. And when you do the pull harness, it's very awkward depending on how much someone hoists you up. And this is really Eddie Shipstead's specialty. And he helps really people work with the, their, apparently hit the leg position in the air. People really speak very highly of him. And Alyssa has been going to Colorado for a long time, which didn't make sense except if she's working with the harness guy, that is the thing. But people have a lot of thoughts about Christy Crawl being um, on the coaching team. Who is now, according to the way I understand it, she is sort of a more secondary character in that. Yes, right? but she's the one with the esteem, right? Right. Now, the interesting thing about this is that she is very, very smart and she's known as for being a dartfish expert but she kind of has that professor energy to her. So one of the problems they say is she will talk to kids in a very intellectual way, like move your arm 35 degrees to the left, you know, to the right, and then move like, right? But, and it gets people in their heads and sometimes they pop. She would be someone, if American coaches had any education, which Galena likes to remind us that they do not, because you do not have to, Dave, in America, you don't have to do anything to be a coach. You want to be coach right now, you're very good with language. You have so many students. In Russia, we have education. I have very high diploma. You know, they love to let us know that in America, you don't have to do shit to be a coach, okay? You it's pay- It's not a degree dollars. position. Yeah, exactly. So if they had, you know, like some coaching education, I think Christy would probably be one of the best. But when you're teaching someone who's going to an Olympics and trying to fix their technique, it might just not be enough time to, work through the kinks of what the problem is. Although she did work with Patrick Chan. And remember, he used to struggle with the triple axel. He did get the triple axel. We don't know if he worked with Eddie, what he credits it to. He did leave her for a modern dance teacher. So who knows, right? I mean, lots going on in that situation. The world may never know who is truly responsible for what. I mean, a million and one people have helped me with my axel. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do it, agree that it probably takes a village. So what I don't understand is why, why you had to move full time in order to access part of those villages. Do you know what I mean? Like if he's oh, so great. Right. When they looked, the funniest thing is, you know that we made a joke that Massimo and Jeremy were going to Lilith, like were dressed in the kiss and cry like they were going to Lilith Fair. They actually went this past weekend. I mean, come on, this whole- To Lilith Fair? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With adult skater Gene K, the real icon. Okay, so anyway, we you love even it. know the, their musical taste before we do. Okay. Oh please, the flannel <laughs> said it all, honey. You saw that long hair. <laughs> but like, if if the issue was really one of image, like that could have been addressed in like a meeting, and I'm sure they would have been happy to accommodate it if that. Was I don't think it was the factor. image, Jonathan. You know, yeah, they exactly. would. You know, Liz has been battling a hip injury, so they were trying to be very responsible with her. I do know this and try to like manage the numbers over the time. And I'm sure now that we are in the thick of it and she's getting under rotations, it is very stressed and you're looking for who has answers and it's a panic. Um, I know that Jeremy tried to work on her Lutz technique, which most people would say she needed to work on. Of course, the quad Lutz has never come back. I wouldn't- It's never been it. real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think he was doing the right thing early, but then you have to revert back to what works. and. It's a dicey situation, but I'm really, when I saw it, I thought there's not an A-list coach on this coaching panel. Is the USFS going to allow Drew Meekins to be the coach that's like politicking our top skater at the Olympics? Is this a setup or is this a thank you for Drew for dealing with Vincent Zoe all the years, being the one constant figure while they're going between Tammy and Tom and dealing with Mrs. Zo, or is it a thank you? He shut his mouth about John Coughlin and Caitlin and Kaus, like knew all about like both sides, every side of, you know, that shut his mouth about Delilah when he was in amongst the coaching scene. I mean, he has like really been under the radar, friends with everyone, enemies of no one and played the, the, the political game, so to speak, master politician, son of, four-time Alaska House of Representatives member. Actual politician, yeah. <laughs> so are they, is this their way of elevating the next generation of coaches or is Tom Z gonna swoop in 
And is it like, maybe they don't even know. Maybe these coaches don't even know that, look, Brady Tanell pulled out a Zagreb. And is she going to pull out a Nationals? I'm sure Tom Z would love to have Arthur Liu's cell phone number if he doesn't have it already. Arthur Liu could call him on the phone. Tom Z could swoop in for the Olympics. Wouldn't that look appropriate? Mm. If you had any faith in that. And if, if you're I the USFS, any, I don't know why you... Why if I had any I faith in the USFS? That's exactly yeah. what they no, would no, no. do. In Tom's product. I mean, if you really thought that Tom's product... That is exactly what they would do. You need someone with the name. She is the top... Amer potentially the top American lady at the, who are we going to send? Karen Chen as our top lady or Mariah Bell, who her primary coach number one and primary coach number two didn't even go to the competition with her. People were asking who Vera Artunian was when they saw right. her in the kiss and cry. It wasn't even Nadia who accompanies the Raphael students from time to time. People were like, who is she? Okay. Yeah. They're going to want to put a coach, one of the knocks against Mariah in 2014 is they said that she didn't have a coach, but right. she was working with people in that kiss and cry. They love the package. Remember Tara wanted to dump Richard and have Craig Maurizi take her to the Olympics in 1998. And they said, no, you need Richard to take you to the Olympics. It's all the package of like Michelle with time. Why does Lori Nichols show up in the kiss and cry? Right. Why do you, you know, when she's the choreographer for people, it's all about the branding. Why does Mia Hamada show up for Vincent Zoe? He looks like a right. more refined, accomplished, high-level skater. It's all mm -hmm. bullshit. So yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I were Drew. I want that ironclad contract. I am in the kiss and cry at the Olympics, no matter what, honey. Mm. It's just. I mean, if you if you were Arthur Liu, do you panic right now? Yes. And is that the move you make? Jonathan, you know, how, how much do you think a designer baby costs? I know, but so if you're- a Designer baby moment, who's supposed to get you to Olympic gold and you're getting this close and now she's getting under rotations and falling on triple axles. Yeah, I would be nervous. I would be concerned. But see, I would be the least nervous I've been because I just believe in whatever process she's in. What process? They've changed coaches how many times in the last two years? I know, but it seemed like the Jerry Mosmo one was at least getting them somewhere where they had been going. Yeah, no. they did the actual technical work, and now you have the other coach for the image and the politics. I, I mean, that's... Uh, I Thank also you understand. so much for the skating skills. Bye now. <laughs> yeah, because now I think they know they're like, forget the skating skills. Now we need the technical number. They, like, should, really, they should really call Marina Zueva now, too. She would be great in the kiss and cry. Yeah. That's the kind of move I, cause she's almost in a way been anti-establishment with the USFS. Like she's always kind of been doing her own thing in a cool way. They have, who, Alyssa? Well, I find she has not- they helped her arrange to, like, all those coaches. I mean, come oh, on. Oh, for sure. But she's not doing like the, until now, she's not doing the traditional trajectory of teams, which I kind of Listen, like. There's a mother her. in the Bay area that has a daughter with very good jumps and a lack of skating skills. And I said to her six months ago, Massimo and Jeremy may be Alyssa's coaches now. In eight months, they sure as hell won't be. You swoop them up. Yeah. I stand by it. Okay. Yeah. I called it. It happened. Someone like I think the, the work they did with her proves that they really do have, and the idea that they're trying to rest from an injury and go slow and like do, I don't know. It seems like they really kind of get it. It is an opportunity though to make more coaches because one of the knocks in the US is that we don't have any coaches. Like, where are you gonna go? Right. You wanna go to Raphael? Like he's very good for a couple of people. Other people get injured. Remember, whatever happened to Vivian Lee? Whatever happened to like so many people that went there? What happened Go to Gogolev? What happened, was, right? Yeah. I mean, it worked, right? That technique doesn't work for everyone, right? Where are you gonna go? Yeah. Tom Z, you see what happens. Tammy, the under rotations. Where are you going to send your kid? Right. You need to get to a certain point. Now, Victor Pfeiffer is a very, very good technician. He moved there over the summer. He's now going to be responsible for the jumps for Alyssa and working with her. He works a little bit with Vincent So. He's worked with Ilya Malinin. Like, he's worked with, he's one of those people that's been under the radar for the last couple of years. He started to have some sectional winners. That's why they pulled him to Colorado. They're like creating another 
coaching situation in the U.S. So, no, it's just you seem very depressed and disillusioned by the skating world at this. Yeah, you know why? Surprises me. I know. I none of it surprises me, but I guess it was just like. I always loved the outsider mentality. You I love loved Jeremy coming so much. You didn't know but Jeremy did, was going to get fucked over by Arthur? You could have seen that coming a mile away, okay? How did, did you not Ar- know? Did Arthur just screw over himself and Alyssa in the process? And that is my concern because I just did, saw- Did he like, not screw her over years ago by devoting her life to figure skating? <laughs> like, well, know. that's the thing, yeah. I mean, <laughs> or waiting as long as they did to enlist the help of someone like Amasimo and Jeremy, I don't know. I just, I hope this doesn't detract from them because it, I don't know. It just seems like they do good work. And you love the coaches. You love, they all, Laura, Massimo, Jeremy, they all say how much they like Alyssa. I believe <laughs> Alyssa is probably a delight to work with. That could they be all say they like movie. Alyssa. No one talks about Arthur. Right. <laughs> Publicly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't blame her for him. But Laura you know? Lepetsky's husband looks at every status and likes everything about Arthur. I would just say. Okay, okay. amazing. amazing. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I bet it's a full-time commitment to be to be on call for him. Yeah. Um, well, let's see, it's it's not very much time. Mm-mm. It's under two months, kind of. So we'll see what happens. And who knows when she? And I feel for her because she's acting out a little bit when she's writing that she doesn't live in Colorado Springs. Right. And then they even in the announcement they didn't commit to her living in Colorado. They were saying like. Well, she'll still be back and forth and working with Philip Guillermo and like what? It makes you look where's more the of a consistency? Mess. Where's the consistency? Where, how does this settle an athlete? Uh, I, I don't think it does. Listen, Lashai. She pointed Alyssa out years ago. She said, "Dave, there's a dad who's gay." who sounds like he's got designer children that are triplets. He's got some sort of shady connection to China. There was protesting, there's stuff on the internet. I mean, what more? He loved Michelle Kwan. What more do we want? He's making okay. Danny Kwan-esque choices. Yeah, like, I don't know, I don't know. Listen, Danny stuck with Frank for 10 years, okay? Just say it, all yeah, right? I, I, it's gonna be a fascinating thing to see what they try to change in this amount of time. Because I would think even as we noticed when we interviewed Raphael, like he's always like, what can I do with such little time? Well, if you're this coaching staff, what can you possibly do in two months? And what is being expected of you to do in two months that doesn't disrupt the apple cart, but yet also makes the improvements they're looking to do? I don't know, because you think they would have to like pull the rug out from under the whole thing. It's a scary time to like uproot your technique. For instance, when you went to Galena, and you had sort of like had some basics from Natasha. Natasha, Natalia? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Natasha, yeah, yeah. What, how much, because this, this happens in singing sometimes. If you have been trained in a certain technique and now you go to a new technician, you're doing two things. You're learning the new technique, yes, but you're also unlearning all of the muscle habits and ingrained technique that, yeah. that you have already. So there's an- It's taken me like the biggest thing that, you know, so she told me that I was a village skater with village technique before I met her. Um, <laughs> How quaint. <laughs> the biggest thing and the biggest issue I always had in my skating was my left arm. You know, I've worked on that with Pilates. I've worked on that with just repetition. And I will say that it's taken 18 months to, you know, to at least to be something where I at least know in my head, oh, I moved my alarm, I felt it. The right? awareness of an area. We have so many dead areas we're not accustomed to being so yeah. in tune with. But so how much of that arm And it's not perfect like, yet by any means, my left arm, like it's still. But did you go to Galena that way because Natasha slash Natalia had told you something else that you had ingrained or, sh- or you had just gotten away with something? I had just gotten away with it and I need to move to a bigger rink. And I just, I had the opportunity to work with Victor over quarantine. It just happened naturally. Like when yeah. I was coming back to skating, I was originally working on moves and just getting my jumps back. Or my friend Freddie, who you know, was helping me. Right. But it just, it, it all kind of just fell together. And I've still, you know, visited Natasha. So people are good at different things and different. Uh, look, I landed my axle. I didn't land it with Galena for the first time. Now to her credit, I was so close the day before. I was feeling what I was doing. It was there. There had been a thing where someone's, she wants your arms to go out and then in on the single. But because I am 
an adult and my arms are not my best, they can go out and up on some of my ah, jumps sometimes, okay. right? But Victor, and I asked her about this like six weeks ago and she lost her mind about maybe about two months ago that I would dare to ask to use Victor's technique even though he's her student. But he likes to have the arms like this. And the last thing he told me was just focus on the left arm, your right arm will do it naturally and just lift and that's what made it happen. So, by the way, yes, I know it was on the queue and four people let me know. Even like one fan slash adult skater was the first one in the comments. Like, really, amazing, thank you, sir. Amazing. It's a process. <laughs> I didn't care, okay? It yeah, was yeah. a miracle. One has to start yeah. somewhere. First approximation, pancake. Listen, <laughs> hilarious. Anyway. But so that's the thing with Alyssa is how much does she now have to erase with them or, and how much is she replacing or how much are they just gonna like carry her through the status quo? It's gonna be a very interesting journey to see what they even attempt to try to, to adjust. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a lot that you can do in 40 days. You can get her a little right. bit trained. You can get in a little bit better condition because she's competed a lot and hasn't done a lot of run-throughs and maybe a couple technical things, but at this point, Jonathan, 40 days before the nationals. Yeah. I and think if your problem are cues, is that where you go? They, well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the home of cues. It's where carrots are grown. I, <laughs> people say that. Alyssa already had. Look, yeah. I don't believe yeah. that the cues. I mean, that's a nice joke. However, right. Vincent spent a lot of time in California. Okay, before he, yeah. look. Really, I think some of the cues come from people that try to push jumps out before in their time. I mean, how much pressure have some of these skaters had on them? to? will things to happen to produce early yeah think about sarah hughes willing herself to do those triple triples right, right. i mean you see some of these skaters that really try to push it out early i mean i don't think it's the only reason for a cue i think there are tactical reasons and you know everything like that but when you look at Alyssa and how she forced her body to learn that technique i mean you're you're trying to will something to happen you're trying to rush it you're teaching your body to rotate you're fighting faster. the body instead of working with yeah it. you're trying yeah. to get the result right like yeah. so much right and I, but what i think that they're doing is what arthur doesn't realize is that subconsciously if you keep switching coaches before an event you're telling the skater, you're not ready, you're not good enough, this isn't There's a enough. problem, there's a now, problem. Now, with Dorothy yeah. Hamill, she went to a different coach right before the Olympics because she wasn't training hard enough to win that gold, she wasn't in the right mental space. But someone like Alyssa's been to 17 freaking different coaches, at this point, you're almost unnerving mm. the athlete. And they'll all want credit for rebuilding it from the ground up. So no, like, I, I don't think, think they anyone's have time, just gonna let it go. Yeah. But you also are putting her in a new situation, a pressure situation with people that she doesn't have a relationship with. Now, they can be very good, but ultimately they're not gonna know you emotionally, which just takes time to build and you oh. can't force it. When do you push? When do you pull back? When do you joke? Even like what someone says to you at an event, how, you know, does this skater like someone in their face? Do they like, there's just not a lot of time, so. I would imagine these coaches that take their athletes on many, many competitions and events, you really start to know the way to handle them a little bit and again, that's how you learn someone it can't just be like hi how are you let's just sit at this kiss and cry together i'll just hold your skate cards here like listen you need no you one need a sense of home now no one is going to get the blame for Alyssa at this point but arthur right because frankly it's like hot fire of hot mess okay like it's just If she bombed, I mean, is this under the the whole guise that he wants her to be on the the team that wins the silver medal? Whatever. I mean, who said that they were going to win the silver? I mean, no. Anything is possible. I don't know. It's just poor ridiculous. choices. Poor choices. Poor choices. But it's a mess, Jonathan. Anyway, let's discuss other messes. The on edge show. Review. Now, the Olympic Channel did an all around series for gymnastics. Now they're doing one for. Uh, ice dance. How much I wish this was produced by Dominique Dawes and a golden situation where we really started to learn more because frankly, the Hubble and Donahue dynamic and psychology is everything. I mean, everything we thought about these skaters, for, remember, we loved them. We were so behind them. They were the underdogs. I feel like we learned a lot about them, even in a very curated 
edited Nick McCarvel type situation. What was your take on the On Edge series? Well, it was also fascinating how much bickering they do. Because, you know, I mean, it, it has to be that way sometimes. Well, they're both imagine. fiery, passionate people. Yes, as like, they will let you know. And she did, there, there is that one, it's tricky when I think you do a show like this and you're the athlete and you don't understand who's watching. I would assume this is a, a show for super fans. Like, it's so we know, we know the pedigree, we know what they're doing, but it is unnerving as you mentioned, <laughs> like at the end of the thing when she's like, after all the world titles, after all of the championship, I mean, I think she meant world medals, but she did. She was making it sound like she was well, Virtue and Moyer. Yeah. Jonathan. These are two people who have felt that they have deserved, and she even told them they felt that they were of that caliber. Think about how much, once they got to that level and won that world silver medal four years ago, they've struggled with their identity and finding who they are. They've done everything wrong. People have thought like, are they Virtue and Moyer with Romeo and Juliet? And they haven't been able to find their spark again. What made them edgy when they had that underdog vibe, they went soft. They went hallelujah, like, right? You go from Beth Hart, edge, passion, power. She talks about their fire. <coughs> Think about the things they've done since. Romeo and Juliet, a weird version of A Star is Born that had like country rock in it, wasn't even the emotional part. Hallelujah, and uh, 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 uh. is that someone to you that has passion and fire? Is that what you're getting from their bickering? To me, that's that's all against type. That's you trying to be softer because you think that's what a top skater skates to. It's almost like their their identity of themselves is compromised, and maybe that's why they're epics, epically in this. Well, and you just want them. We I've said it a hundred times. I want them to lean into who they are as skaters. Yes. Unfortunately, it seems like who they want to be as skaters is not who they are as skaters. Like we even back in the day when there was a little bit more relevancy about her on the podium with like Gabby Daleman is that she seemed to always want to be glitz and glam, but she was actually this like core aggressive athlete that was so exciting, but she fought it instead of went with it. And Hubble and Donahue are right. I think their technical ability is Absolutely in the top class of the world. No one skates bigger, no one skates faster. It's just so incredible. I've just never seen anyone get their own voice wrong so often because again, maybe there is a reluctance to lean into what is real. Show me that bickering couple. I noticed two things that she said that really struck me just in listening to what they were saying. When she was already trying to act, to the interview as though she's more than skating. Oh, I ice dance from time, or I skate from time to time, whatever the line was, you know, and I'm an ice dancer. You know, she made this line where she wanted it to make it be known that it wasn't all she is, when frankly, you're an Olympian going for it and you just answer the question like, hi, I'm Madison Hubble and I'm an ice dancer for Team USA. You know, she was like, and, you know, she made like that distinction or trying to be yeah. clumsy. Yeah. And then she said that, and you just realize like there's a lot going on with skaters who are retiring and we'll talk about Kirsten Moore Towers next, uh, your favorite. Now, I just really was like, wow, there's a lot going on up here. And I think that that's been the problem, right? And it's, well, and they yeah, have a lot a of voices and they know that the, how talented they are. And I think that's part of the problem with it. But when she said that, you have to think about every skater that I knew, look at that quote, like what? And then you have to think about like, what are Papadakis and Cizeron thinking when they watch that? Even though she's good friends with Gabby, I like wanted to see their very French reaction when they talked about their world titles. It's just an awkward turn of phrase. Yeah. It was clumsy, okay? But it was just strange. It was... I mean, it is, it is interesting and I'm glad you brought it up because I almost, I, I, it's something I want to talk about is we have the people in an Olympic season where we're assuming it's mm -hmm. sort of going to be their last competitive season. But mm -hmm. man, when they come out blazing and announce it, I think it must just add so much weirdness to what's already such a complicated like season. 
They have, mm-hmm. they have domestic rivalries. They have these international rivalries. They're looking, they're right on the cusp. Can they get on that podium? Will they not get on that podium? And now you're also throwing into the mix, oh, and this is the last time I'll ever go to Skate America. Oh, this is our last Grand Prix. Oh, this is the final. Oh, this is the, I don't know, when you're also aware you're not going to do it moving forward. I, I think it's got a Take She's your very brain weird. down a whole nother so Kim Zameskel talked about it. She said that, you know, going into the 92 Olympics, she thought this is going to be the last meet of my career. It has to be the best meet of my life. Like you do all of this stuff. She was injured going in. You, you just add different layers to it. I even knew that, that years ago I was going to stop skating. And I thought like, I was like, oh, this is going to be it. I'm going to go for my master's. And I don't know if I'll ever skate again. You know, you, you do weird shit to yourself. Like, of course, like what, what, do you, what games are you playing? You can always compete again after. One of the things that Kirsten Moore has said is she doesn't know if she wants to go to Worlds. And you think like, why are you even worrying about this now and publicly stating it and all this stuff is happening? Right. And I really feel for Kirsten Moore Towers, but I want to shake her in like right. the worst way and be like, you're really talented and you're good and you're feisty and you're screwing this up. This is not Eric and Vanessa's fault. The no. problem is your reaction to all Eric of Eric and Vanessa were not here, where they no. were almost less. And I get that they didn't have their skates and everyone's gonna want that to be known, you know, and it's true. It's very weird that anyone who could have gotten the bronze medal in Paris didn't have their luggage. Just, you know, Russian things that we expect. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like a black hole when you go there as a non-Russian. <laughs> not everyone's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on your side, but anyway. And look, their luggage could have been lost. We all have, of you course, know. Of course, I know you were just playing the backlash in your head. I could see it. <laughs> Seeing the sports.ru article. Dave, American journalist, Dave Lee. Journal- yeah, exactly. only Luggage only gets lost in Russia. No. Well, okay. what about Alyssa Liu's luggage, Dave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, response. you know, talking to people, I think Kirsten probably thought that they were at their peak two years ago for Montreal Worlds, it got canceled. They've never been as confident or as motivated, but they also got very close with Evelyn and Trent, which seemed strange that they're so like emotionally connected and that because Evelyn and Trent haven't been to the Olympics before. And, you know, they spend a lot of time with Alison Perkis, who was with them at this event, who is, you know, reworking their twist, which doesn't seem to be, um, working for them at all. That twist went from average to poor to worse than poor to, oh, oh dear God, right? In any yeah, to scary, program. to scary, yeah. Um, and they've consistently been going down. They really reacted emotionally to the Eric and Vanessa thing. When you have to think like, we have so many years together, they're a brand new team, we have momentum going, like, and you almost would be like, I'd be like, yeah, I'll show you, you know, like what I'll do. Because they could have. No, granted, I would have been in my feelings for a couple of days, a week, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. But it feels like they've just sat in it. And also during COVID, she started saying interviews that she was old, which you think Eric's older than you are, honey. Right. <laughs> Deanna Stelato was older than you are, and she's out there pushing. <laughs> you know, you're not the oldest skater. Like, right. frankly, you seem healthy and relatively like ready to go. And when you start talking about yourself being old, you feel old, as Boginskaya said in an interview, uh, right? That's when you start fixating on it. And I think she's just been in a bad spot. And it's like, what is happening? Isn't there skating? She's still a very good skater and they can turn it around, but they're gonna have to hit like a rock bottom, come together, like meeting at 9 PM at my house with, you know, a hot tea and- uh, They need know. a real hard moment of honesty. Yeah. yeah, that we need to get our shit together and we're in it because frankly, they're, they're likely on the Canadian team, let's be honest. The Skate Canada would be, you know, Silly, I, I think Mike Flipchuk maybe needs to go visit them and yank them and be like, go back to your formula of what worked. But I would look at KMT and be like, you are a really good, Skater, look at all you've done in your track record and the relative consistency that you've had. What the hell is going on in your head? You need to fix it and climb out of this. And 
it's it's not happening. It's like it's just like a snowball that's like going down from event to event. Well, and again, like you're saying in the interviews, already discussing that I don't want to go to world. She's already out. To me, she's yeah. already out of the season. She's not in the moment. She's not in. I, I don't know. They they. Are. And I wonder, um, you know, having a long term relationship. You know, Liam is not skating for years now. Is that strange? You know, there's does so it many... feel like skating takes you away from the thing you'd rather be doing now? Yeah. I just think that there's been so many things that have been happening over the last years. I'm sure COVID, you know, being separated, different things like that, really, really hard. But at the same point, Megan and Eric had to turn it around too, four years ago during the Grand Prix. Yep. Um, and they did. They did. <laughs> She can do it too. They yeah. are very experienced. But even, okay, so the short program, you didn't have your luggage, you make mistakes. But the next day they didn't turn it around. Right. It was worse. I mean, the, the, the throw triple sow, just the body language of when they're skating. So it's, it's a tough one. I don't know. Do you think that they will turn it? Like, what's your take on what is gonna happen? No. I, it's sad. I, I, I'm not saying you that thing about her. What is your honest to God read on her? This is your Do you know why? Because, because I really think one, you know, just like in a, in a cheeky way, I just don't care for the music selections and material that they put out, but that's just, who cares? That's just a subjective thing. She used to inspire me a lot. Like mm -hmm. I was into them and Dylan because they were sort of the underdogs as they were surpassing Megan and Eric in 2014, stuff like that. She really did take a step back when she had to build this partnership with Michael. And I, I don't know, there was something inspiring because she had so much fight in her at that time. And she was making it work and she was staying relevant. And then you just sort of see someone that seems to be this must be my own projection as a performer, but you see she's like relinquishing any hope that somewhere inside she's let it go. And now we're just gonna watch it circle the drain at the end of the season. But it's like you're saying, you wanna shake someone to be like, I almost want you to inspire me now. I want you to turn it around because I want a feel good story from you. Uh, Cause like you're saying, with just a pivot in the mind shift, I think there's much more possible here than she's admitting. They're, they could easily win Canadian nationals if they wanted because um, quite frankly, Vanessa and Eric didn't come on the way I think they had intended either. So they wrote the narrative, I think, before she even tried. And that's disappointing to me. I this is all let... making it up, but. Sometimes I think people read too much into things. Did Vanessa and Eric get a lot of hype when they came together? Absolutely. There were CBC and things, but I think they were just trying to build excitement for the Olympics. Yes. But I think as a skater, you're going to take that as, oh my God, they want them to win. Look at what a big deal they're making. And I understand that. But that's when you have to be like, I'll show them. I'm not going to give them the choice. They're going to have to let instead, me win. Instead, I think being be around somewhere. Evelyn and Trent, who obviously think we're not going to the Olympics now, and you're with their coach. Like, I think they stayed in that mindset for too long. And then you add the last, it's just been a really hard thing. Meanwhile, you know, when they skate with the Japanese, I mean, look at the way that they are just soaring. And I would, I would, you have to like, look and be like, okay, I can train at this situation where I'm with Evelyn and Trent who are not doing well. Or I can skate with the Japanese team who might fight, you know, make me want to skate better. And maybe the but energy I, is just different. It's not about just killing the time and closing out the season frankly, in a dark room. This is the last thing Carson wants to hear. I would freaking call Megan and ask her how she and Eric pulled it out. Because how things did were you going pivot? down. Things were going down for Megan and Eric before they pulled it together. Yeah. But that's I mean, this is, this is in its own way, the metaphor to even what we talk about in programs ever since Debbie Thomas. Like, it's like, okay, KMT missed the first element mm -hmm. in the season, if you will. But now she's like letting every jump pop now. You think she should pull out a diagram? I don't know how competing one more competition is going to rectify this. I think time away from competition may rectify it. I don't know why. You don't have a lot of time, right? Because you start so to what get... could change? So I think it's going to be a repeat experience because they haven't changed anything since. I think they need to regroup drastically. And I don't think Zagreb is going to be a positive experience for them. I don't think it's going to motivate or you know inspire. Why? Because I don't think they have enough time to turn it around. 
And then they've always been thought of as being ahead of the American teams and they're not anymore. And Zagreb no. is going to be like no. a head to head moment where they can finish behind the US teams. And to me, that's the biggest risk where you go from being that fifth or sixth place team to that 10th place team. Right. And that's what is really at stake if you go to that situation. So yeah, after Megan and Eric did not so bad last week. You mean Vanessa France. and Eric? Uh, sorry, sorry, you know what I mean. Do you know? <laughs> that, but be, the, suddenly the trajectory going in is that, okay, I see Vanessa and Eric winning. The How about the, no the race for the gold medal? I think got really interesting this week because again, Mishna Galyamov, not, not so great short program skaters, you know, not their um, best. Winning here with a very solid free what do you make of their program, their chances, everything going forward? Well, it's interesting because again, now that we've taken away any excitement about potential throw quads, which I think Khodikin would be all about, by the way, if they had- the Ali Raisman of Mother Russia. <laughs> Daria <laughs> 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 yes. Um, But I think, and also without sort of, we don't see any triple flips or triple lutzes right now. So it's gonna be a lot in these triple triples Mm -hmm. and they're triple triple, even though they do that Euler and it looks a little like wonky, but they get right back into that sow. And I don't know how you can beat them when they deliver three solid side-by-side triples. Well, components, quality, they do not take off in the same time on those Eulers, but- Yes, that's true, yeah. you know, they were fourth in components at Worlds. Now they were also, that's a year ago before they were world champions. Right. I'd say now, what are they, third in components? Um, but, you know, it comes down to mistakes. I trust Moskvina's track record. Listen. I do too. She made Kazakova and Dimitri of Olympic champions when they skated like... I was at that They skated America not very well for several seasons as mm-hmm. I was, and mm-hmm. pulled it out. She couldn't even do that back outside death spiral before the warm up. Masvina handled it. It was fine, yeah. right? Yeah. I do think that the ending of this program, when he wants to lift her up, it's like what they are wait they waiting for. It. for? Yes, it's it so eggy. Work. It doesn't mm-hmm. work. It hasn't worked all season. They need like another turn going into. They need time to fill because they almost get there, and they, it's as if they've gotten there too soon, and they're just like, "Should we do the lift thing?" Okay, and then it's. I don't okay. it's think it's the close. music for them. I do think. You know, the Russians have the expression fight for the podium or fight for the medals, as if you're fighting for a medal and then anything could happen, right? And, and in this pair competition, there's so much focus on Tarasova and Morozov and, and Sway and Han that it just seems like if you're in the conversation and you skate a good free, as we saw at the last World Championships, anything is possible. I think this team needs to be top three in mathematically in it after the short program. I think anything is possible. In that, in that free skate. <laughs> yeah, mainly because of, I think they could do it, but they would need help from the other two mm-hmm. teams in order to make that move. They would have to be clean and the other teams would have to have errors. And I think they would, they would do it. But I think, but I that's, think a, that's a strong Sway, possibility. Sway in hand and Jarazova Morozov have had errors. So. Right, that's exactly right. I was curious because when I was in Canada and you saw the framework for the short program of uh, Pavlyuchenko and Khodifa, like I, there was something interesting about it. Again, mm-hmm. so unlike anyone else, a lot of like circus moves, like a lot of like tumbling throws and tricks and stuff like that. And I thought, God, if they ever did this, could they upset the apple cart at nationals with like a Boykova situation if she keeps imploding on those side by sides? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not really making the move that I think Boykova is in trouble, but they're a closer fourth than maybe I anticipated they would be going into the And remember, Mishna Galyamov haven't been the best skaters at nationals in the past. And uh, uh, Daria and Dennis have traditionally done okay at nationals, but I don't think this year is their year as long as Boykova is good enough. And- Is good enough. And she has proven she's right on that line. But I think that they seem to be a little bit on the up right now. Yeah. And yeah. Dorian Dennis, the free program got really messy to the point yeah, of it didn't Kashmar. To the and he he is just again such a peculiar partner and won't shut up. Like he even makes me nervous when they're talking before they begin skating. But um, 
No, it was really interesting. I, I'm very interested. He has a bit of a Megan Duhamel Russian energy to her, right? There's. Oh, no. her. I thought he did because he was chatting so much. I meant in terms of how feisty and athletic and doing that twist. With the, come on. She's a fighter. She's a fighter. There's something about her. But Mish Nagalyamov, I'm really interested to see this final and, and what happened at, at the final in uh, the Paris. I can't believe they have to go from Russia, now go to the final, then go to nationals, then go to Europeans. I'm like, this is... They got to buckle well, up because this is a in the past. Stretch. Some Russian teams have pulled out of Europeans, yeah. especially in an Olympic year. Yeah. Um, it does desensitize you to competition. You think about Moskvina and peaking. Maybe for Mishina Galyamov or Boykova, like the fact that they were bad early on, she's not so worried because you're going to go out there a million more times and right. get better. It's exposure therapy. You just keep doing it, baby. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but looking at the final, Tarasa Rorozov, Mishna Galyamov, uh, Daria and Dennis, Sway and Han, uh, you know, the Japanese, um, Boykova Kozlovsky, it's, it's, it's a really exciting field. It's really yeah. could be. Happy anything. that the Japanese made it in there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, really really uh, strong build all right let's talk about the ladies let's let's break it down all right where to begin let's start with mariah bell we uh ah yeah okay we were talking about Alyssa Liu earlier we she had a did you watch the practice session videos that came out the day before no you know, i the, did not the samba 70 skaters from Hrustalni have had some of the worst practice sessions on Right. Uh, last week, um, Kostrnaya, Sherbakova, I mean, they will bomb practice the day before. Now, some of that can be due to jet lag when you really are. Fair enough. Not, and yeah. adjusting to new ice. But Mariah Bell went from France to Russia. It's not yeah. horrible, right? It's not like you're flying to Japan from the US, right? And she under rotated everything and was falling in the second half of that free. It got really, really bad the day before. Granted, she didn't go for the triple triple in the short. It looked like she was almost going to go for it and didn't get the pick. And it wound up being like the saving grace. Right. Because that beautiful free skate that she did where she just stood up on enough jumps. It wasn't the best free skate of her life. It <laughs> saved her career here. Kind it of. Yeah. The free skates of the last two weeks have really saved her career. She went from being very much off of the U.S. team to now that where in the world is Brady Tunnell? Are you sending Mariah Bell? I'm sending Mariah Bell. I'm sorry. Right now it's I am, and she. Ch I have to. I have to own that now. She has changed my mind, mm -hmm. and she was in a position where she almost had to change everyone's mind. Listen, like I told now. her, send that poinsettia to Lori Parker. <laughs> <laughs> you send it to Troy Goldstein. You send it I mean, to Wendy Ensman. You send it to Dana Graham. You send all of them. Holland, Mariah, you keep doing it. And that triple flip, double toe, baby, don't go for broke in the short program. It's not worth it. Your free program is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. At the end of that hallelujah, uh, you tell Hoda about the, your boyfriend troubles, all of it. The bunnies. Ansu, you give a good sit down interview before the nationals and make yourself the most intriguing, heartfelt skater that you just love skating. And this is your Olympic dream. And you lay on the tears, be like Erica Jane and you know, don't wear waterproof mascara, let it rain, honey, black <laughs> tears down your face. And you get on that Olympic team with PR the way Adam Rapon did four years ago and call Christine Brennan and learn about human rights in China, have Adam script something for you. Christine will turn you into Ashley Wagner and she will be like, yes, this skater here, she is who we needed, okay? Speaking <laughs> out, you know how Christine is. She loves a topical story. Talk about the tennis player in China, maybe. Mariah, learn a little bit about Christine. We'll put you in every article. You will be biggest star, okay? <laughs> Heartfelt Instagram followers, like you don't even know. Okay. But I do, th I think you're right. I think suddenly she's 100% right back in that conversation and she had really all but taken herself out. Oh, I, by the way, I'm kidding about nothing of what I just said. I know okay. you are. <laughs> <laughs> like Tessa Virtue, you have to build your brand on the internet. Ah, okay. It's true. I, I, was, I was very surprised for her. Mm -hmm. so. It was gorgeous, okay simple elegance 
the end, that Nancy Kerrigan spiral moment. It's what the people want in skating, okay? Because unfortunately, Ms. Who Henry has the choreography, it. Jonathan, okay? <laughs> Mariah Bell, all right? Yeah, yeah. And you know the Russians are gonna be like, well, who has the quads? Well, not Maya Hromich, apparently. <laughs> oh, selectively Maya Hromich. I thought we were out of that, those woods. It's just, it just goes to show you, it's never you know, really always she there. bags out of the garage, Amber Corwin style, on her Lutz, as well as the quadruple sheepskin, okay? I mean, it was really... <laughs> In this Cascading rental, engine. it was not yeah. the best. This rental yeah. was, you know, this is, <laughs> I, I think, unfortunately, for apparently a Terry was best in the short program because she took oh. herself out yeah. of the Olympics in that situation. Right. Well, because I was trying to think of it from a Tuktamisheva standpoint, and we knew Tuktamisheva stood the chance to beat Maya in the free. Tuktamisheva? Just... Oh. <laughs> I know, but you know what? That's a performance. She's the one that got the crowd going in that moment. Even she waited until that moment to do it. Uh, Terry deserves all the spots, but Lisa needs to go, okay? <laughs> I know, and if you think about it, like, yes, of course, everyone understands the merits of the quads and transition that, blah, blah, blah. Who got the crowd out of the seats? Who is the one that inspired the biggest response of the evening was Tuk Dimisheva, and that was the third place... I mean, it's always like when um, non-skating people are like, oh yeah, figure skating, Battle of the Carmens. And I was like, yep, second and fourth place in the free skate in Calgary, the Battle of the Carmens, right? Like, we need Elizabeth not... Tuk Demishova at yeah, the, the performance of the evening. It's not always the one we think it's Listen, gonna be. The Russians love to talk about that age rule. It's one of their favorite things in the press because then they can get quotes from people being like, well, who can compete with us if we don't raise the age? They love yeah. those articles. But then if you send a 25 year old and she medals, you don't have to change anything with the age. It's just that saying, thing. that's the thing. And I, really, you could just tell the world is rooting for her. How many quads do you think Trusova would have to do at the Olympics to cheat for her to get there? And to screw over to Dimitriva? To get there. Now, granted, she has a broken foot, probably the landing foot. <laughs> like, what, are we, what are we talking? Yeah, and are we assuming no triple axle in the short? I would hope not. She's never I landed would it. Not. Would it be the time to go for it with that two breeds a triple axle where they don't use the left arm? Come on. I think she needs a minimum three, don't you? Yeah. I think okay. minimum, minimum three. I know that they're going to want her to do at least two, but think about it. I think she's going to have to, they're going to have to put her on every, listen, why is Dr. Shevetsky at the boards all the time with that mask underneath his nose? Dr. Shevetsky is going to have to give her more than the poppers to um, help. Uh, <laughs> I have to double barrel it. Yeah. We're going to have to shoot her in the foot and freeze it <laughs> like, like Randy's groin. And we are going to have to um, get her. And I think she, I think she will fight. Okay. I think she will go for it. I wonder if they will go for too many or do, do, it's going to be exciting, okay? I, well, because I was interested because Maya did beat Elisabetta in the free program there. I know. So Jonathan, we do have to Jonathan, let that moment land. Jonathan. I know. Who was judging? Was it Jesus? No, it wasn't, okay? <laughs> but were they Terry will answer to they... him later on for that judgment. Yeah, panel, okay? amazing. Okay. Yeah, because uh, like the Italian judge had Elizabeth fifth. The Kazakh judge had her second. Everyone else had her third. Um, Skatingscores.com delivering again. Okay. I know. It's just so easy the way it's laid out. It makes mm -hmm. it so much better for me. What were the components for Valieva? Tell me, please. What was she Well, getting? Valieva was a 76-27. I mean, she No, no, no. Getting... What were the judges giving? How many tens? Oh, She's got um, a 10 for interpretation. That's the only 10. Oh, no, she has a 10 for performance. See, I think a Terry should lay it on thick for the Olympics because I think a Terry needs to know that there are going to be articles coming out, or there could be, about how she has injured all of these girls, the fact that Trusova is broken. Look at Kostanaya's messy life. Look at Anna Sherbakova's ankle. Look at what happened to Daria. I think she's going to like look at the trajectory of Medvedeva and Zagitova and the ages, right? And all that criticism, it would be a great like New York Times story, right? You know what I would do? I'd be like, we chose this music for Camila Volyeva because we are such Torvald and Dean fans. Because the Western world fucking loves it. 
Love. And it's still, still, every still. American just casually turning in will be like, what happened to Carvel and Dave? Right? <laughs> yeah. Then you invite Chris and Jane to Hrustalni. You get them on the ice, working their arm, flexibility, their shoulders. You get Jane doing that shit. She'll do anything. You've seen those Chris and Jane document. Yes, okay. He, he won't do it. She would never. <laughs> Please. You ask but, a skater for some attention, Jonathan, it's not hard, okay? Okay, Dave, you tell me, please, who's gonna look for any help when she's got a 10 in skating skills? She's got a 10 in performance. She has a 10 in composition. She has a 10 in I get it. Well, that's- You don't need to do anything. I mean, you guys, she it's, skates It's about branding. Fast. It's about the money. It's about the yeah. money that could come yeah. into a Terry. We could take the Terry Tour of Champions on the road, okay? But that's what I'm telling you. You could do all of that to her free program and it's still Elizabeth is it's gonna get bigger applause. Listen, the US has no stars. <laughs> Frankly, if, if a Terry Two Bereeds of Champions on Ice is going to Madison Square Garden, every Russian in Brooklyn is going, okay? Let me tell you, frankly, they won't serve beer, they'll serve vodka by the bottle, okay? And we're all gonna be there. <laughs> we're all gonna watch it, okay? But if, if you invited Tukhtabisheva, all the Americans would show up. Whatever, I, all we can have her, okay? Put her in the show, <laughs> all right? Took to me, she should switch to a Terry. Next week, she'd be on the Olympic team. I'm just telling you, okay? That they wouldn't, know what wouldn't have to give any quotes well. about that quad, okay? No. You saw those marks from Maya, okay? Amazing, all right? Insane, and again, like, because Valgeva winning here, I, I, I just don't understand, like, if we're giving all these 10s and 975s, two 10s for performance. How about for that, uh, for the quad uh, Euler double sal, which, you know, the Euler, not the best. She got all the oh, points. Some plus threes, plus twos. Okay, they didn't go and out. you're just like, okay. USA really? gave a zero, but um, yeah, it's, the fix is in, right? Like yeah, there's no I mean, one who can beat this. I don't know that it's a fix. She's earning it. Is she earning a 10 and a 9.75? She's earning no. a win. I don't no. know if she's earning no, a no, no. margin. She's but like, people do go crazy in an Olympic season with world records and she's landing more quads than we've ever seen and doing the spins. Uh, is the GOE and other PCS out of control? Yes. But I think we've also seen over the last couple of years in an Olympic year that judges do throw this out to everyone. Is the Atari bonus helping? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there have been skaters in the past that also got high marks. Although it's, I have to say, over the last couple of cycles, this has become a bigger and bigger phenomenon and problem. In the yeah. men's, in the ladies, especially when these programs don't have any choreography or transitions, but you land the quads, you create a moment. Right. When yeah. you're like, oh, there was a performance and the overall score for it was 907 for Elisabetta, who got the crowd off their feet and it was an erupting moment. But then you're giving Valieva her all around for performance was 971 and it left the audience cold, even in Russia. We admire it. When she was in Canada, she was so fast. She was very scratchy blades, but so fast. Don't so I, I, but I don't know that it was so exciting to me, but yeah. I agree again, with I you. I agree with her, you. It's, it's her just... Olympics to lose. Yes, of course. Of course. What did you think about Lena Hendricks sort of like slipping back here? I sort of had her as an easy beat of Mar Mariah Bell, but. She's had a lot of competitions lately. Yeah. Um, and nothing that surprised. made me think she was off track. I wasn't surprised, but I don't think that that means that she's out of it for the Olympics. She's kind of a new skater in that top echelon, right? Yeah. And it takes some time to believe you belong there. And going yeah. to Russia, it's, I, I, I think she's very talented and will rise again, right? But I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah. A Russian sweep in Russia. Come on, John. Come on. Yeah. And, and deserved. Do you know what I mean? They, they and they the, just, they already had her nationals and she was landing the triple loop for the first time. I mean, it's fine. I, I, okay. She's good. She's good. It's, she's fine. She's, it's, she's fine. This was not, you know, a make it or break it moment.
How about the men's? Now, the biggest thing to me is Kol Yudah. So what the F, okay? To just, this is becoming bad. But Jonathan. Could have put a single toe loop on something. <laughs> we would have been closer. <laughs> Have you ever been more convinced that he just needs to change the free program? It's just the energy is dark. He doesn't look like he enjoys skating. Last year, he had a lightness about him. Yes, he it was elevated. a much more um, easy mark to give with, during that program. But again, I mean, he won with this program. I think the program is secondary to whatever could get him out of his head because I think he practices beautifully. His technique is beautiful. He seems in shape. Like all the, it's all right there. Well, so now it's even like, We've taken the same narrative we've always had and made it even more perplexing because now he seems more capable than ever to achieve all the things and but there's still that disconnect somewhere it's it's really a shame because again i i don't know who makes more beautiful positions in a men's spin right now like it's, i don't think schindler's list is elevating for him and it yeah. doesn't have whatever the narrative of him being schindler you don't get like emotional angst at the end of the program nothing happens it just kind of exists it doesn't lift him switch the program but i think he needs some sort of a shift something needs to smack him across the face and get it together and if a terry's not going to do it you change that program okay <laughs> all right you but i don't think what makes him such a skilled interpreter is that he's a storyteller it's that he cannot hit an ugly position he told a story last year i look it was mad but it was a beautiful like th it, he wasn't like taking us through an actual plot it's the most literal character. nutcracker we have ever seen or the sharp program again, to the wrong music to the wrong <laughs> the matter music. all right i would switch his music okay yeah. yeah i mean look at him look at how he could finish at the final he's against yuma kagiyama shoma uno vincent zo nathan chen and jason brown i believe he, he could be in last place unfortunately he could be anywhere in that I think he has the talent to damn near be the winner, but I just, and I think he's so elegant. I just, this seems unorganized. Best camel still. spin. Best. Gorgeous. S stunning. Mm -hmm. Stunning. And when he gets those jumps, they're stunning. That some of the axles are like light and it's just like, dude, it's just incredible. I don't know where the disconnect comes. And now you're even starting to see Mishan get a little like, Okay. <laughs> also, two snaps up to Maddie Skisas. Really had a good outing here, and she could turn things around for Canada in the team event. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that Maddie Skisas could maybe listen. Save the day. Depending on which American lady competes in an event, she could make Canada mm -hmm. back in this thing. If they choose right, maybe you have Roman Zidovsky not have his skates at the Olympics, so he pulls out a good performance, and right? I mean, this is, uh, maybe it helped him. Not what about him. Roman Zidovsky here? The, uh, this, was, this was- I mean, most gorgeous layover camel ever. Okay, yeah. ever. Beautiful, and when the, when the quad sow is nice, it's very impressive. Uh, a little slow in some points, and you know, giving away on the landings, but, just much better than in Canada. Much, much better. better. So, yeah. And, and I think nationals is up to him. He will go to the Olympics if he earns it. And you think over Nam? Because Nam just had a slightly more successful outing on the Grand Prix, but it seems like they're pretty even still. Look at the quality of the skating. It's Romans to win or lose. I think so, but unfortunately, he often has that power. Yes. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he is in the driver's seat over Nam because he has a higher level that he can achieve. Right. I would love and to see him do it. I just don't know what to expect. I think with Nam, you know about where you can finish. With Roman, you're rolling some dice. You don't know what can happen. Yeah. Right. It could be great. It could be god awful. But I'm, I think you might want to take that risk if you're Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You've got nothing to lose. <laughs> kind of, yeah, I mean. And I just enjoy Roman skating, so I would always I mean, root for Shun you. Shun Sato, the alternate, by the way, I mean, he is really having a phenomenal season, but the man who is really making, I think, such an impression on the Grand Prix for me, Kazuki Tomono, 
it makes me love skating again when I watch him skate mm. to La La Land. And I the end that. of that yeah. program, da, da, da. I mean, he thinks he's Ashley Wagner, but that program <laughs> is 17,000 times better than Ashley could ever accomplish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and we the quads, are seeing great air position in the quads. Like that energy that he is bringing to the end. I, yeah. We've never seen anything like it. Okay. I, he puts O to O to shame. Okay, that he. It so where do you put him versus like a Shun Sato in the Japan lineup? Because let's, I obviously everyone's hoping Hanyu competes, but under some horrible world where Hanyu cannot compete, and we have Shoma and Yuma, are you looking to Shun? Or are you looking to Kazuka? Okay, I'm looking to Shun. I am too, a little bit, but. My heart prefers Kazuki, and I'm considering them both for worlds, okay? Because at this point, you just don't know what's gonna happen. And I want them both to be around next season. You know, we'll and they're both excited, yeah. Will Shoma skate, will, uh, you know, is Yuzu done, right? I want them in the mix. And because I think Japan has a real opportunity to win some medals in the men's event over the next like two seasons, to mm -hmm. really start things on good stead, especially if you think about Nathan and Vincent likely you know, going back to school, Yuzu likely right. not competing anymore. I want them competing, yeah. especially Kazuki's on an up. Uh, Shun Sato's jumps are incredible. Yuma is developing by the day. I want those boys around. And I mean, who yeah. knows what's gonna happen with Shoma. So I want them all in the mix and it could make skating in Japan Huge. I mean, yes. think about those it. rivalries are crucial. Look yeah. at what it does for us with the Russian. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It like keeps us keeps us involved. I mean, but Kazuki. I mean, yeah. Now, how about Moritz? <laughs> Give it a spin. Good job. Grand Prix champion. Grand, Grand Prix. Grand Prix champion. Fourth place in the long, but yes. And what jump did he do that? Make? Was that a toe? Was that a sell? I like that he keeps you guessing. You never freaking know what it is. And I mean. I you're looking at the table. Wouldn't you love I, it if a, every would Shin Amano give him a rep? Land. Would Shin Amano, Zayak, rule him? Would he say it's the same job? It would take Shin to get it done. Yeah. Only Shin could Have put an end to that a Terry yeah. level of bullshit. Okay, exactly. that is, she is the only one, all right, with the balls to do it, okay? <laughs> and something is so strange looking about the way his left leg lands. Like his free, I don't know. Shin it's stop, like, I mean, Shin Amano is like the honey badger, Jonathan. He doesn't give a he shit. He doesn't care. Yeah. He gave <laughs> Mawasada how many carrots? Okay. I know. I know. He's just studying Karen Chen at home. Okay. He <laughs> is just looking at Alyssa <laughs> Liu, Vincent, Karen. Yeah. Pick up any US champions. What did he think about, uh, you know, what did he think about Alyssa going to Colorado? How did Shin think that that choice was? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Yeah, when he doesn't pick up that foot for the eye and the tongue. It's very strange. But again, some of the most like chaotic limbs, like a, like a horse that's just been born or something like that, or like a, a giraffe or something. <laughs> but, and Terry was like first and last at a Grand Prix. What a thing for her. I didn't even, you know, I forgot that there was another Georgian boy. <laughs> she has the other Georgian boy as well. I can't say. Yes. I must admit. Okay. Okay, they're really, Georgia. they're really working that Georgian judge. Okay, I, okay. I mean that's. <laughs> Remember when Morozov like had to stop coaching people from all around the world and had to focus on the Russians? Like now that I was it's thinking, like, are they going to do that about Morris? And then I thought, no, the Russian Federation is going to put the blame on Kolyada where it belongs. That was yeah, because truly, I mean, the judges tried everything they could to help Kolyada. I mean, even with no Just... combination in the short, he only lost. First place by like what? Two points. You know. What are what your mean? favorite Terry reactions? I mean, I think it's like Medvedeva's world title. Um, you got to think like <laughs> Trizin by Eva, like getting the silver, Anna Sherbakova at nationals, and Morris winning a Grand Prix. Her freaking Even Morris at Europeans and bronze was like one Did of those Did you see those that Botox moments. move? I swear I saw a wrinkle. I swear, okay. You must I, have been really feeling something. Yeah, okay. He was shocked, okay. okay. That was <laughs> incredible. Well, all, with, all the disparaging like backhanded compliments of congratulations after the Europeans. 
she was like, well, I guess if you wait long enough, something will eventually happen or whatever she was saying at Europeans back in the day. Listen, I, God bless her, okay? And God bless Morris, giving Terry a men's champion on the Grand Prix. Adi and Piquet have walked so Morris could run, okay? I know, and I miss him so much. I love his <gasps> Oh game. my goodness. Well, how about the ice dance event here? I was a little bit worried about the marks that we were gonna see for Vicky and Nikki, but you know, they delivered like we have expected. Um, remember when Emily Tuttle told us that Nikita and Elena made mistakes that she didn't, she didn't, she didn't know. even know you could make those mistakes <laughs> on the yeah. dance spin. Yeah, like when you just stop and then just take a seat because you're over it. Yeah, now they were, you know, they kept it close in the rhythm dance. So that was, you know, a high score for the Commodore's action. Um, yeah, where one horrible baggy silk shirt, faux silk shirt, was replaced with another one with like jungle snow leopard print on it. Or Does it feel like your aunt and uncle dancing when you watch them, like at a white wedding, when you, you know, when they're yeah, doing the Commodore it's, section? It's, it, yeah. it feels like a talent show of some sort. And um, yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. The problem wasn't the color of the shirt. It wasn't, no. And it's interesting because they're packaging him the same way in the long, or the free dance rather, with this, all this like flowy, sloppy stuff. And I don't know if this was- well, You know, Russian act. men do not age the best, Jonathan. <laughs> the booze and the cigarettes does not last forever, okay? Even with it though, he's still, he's still very good looking, but like, I didn't know if it was to hide his twizzle arms or to make them seem faster. It's just so unangular and they sort of have like a haphazard, sloppy, rushed quality to some of the moves and this exacerbates it. But I wonder if it was designed to detract from it. I don't know. It's, I miss the sharpness and especially because in the deconstructive tango that the French are doing, mm -hmm. it is so sharp that this seems extra. And again, not soft and lyrical, just soft a little bit and haphazard. Mm -hmm. But I was interested to see that the free dance score was as low as it was, considering the rhythm dance score was as inflated as it was. I know he made the, the error, but this was like 12 points behind the French <laughs> free dance. Yeah, it was not their moment in time. I mean, they, I uh, the, the Italians almost beat it. When the Italians skate, do you find yourself zoning in and out? And I know yes. that they have very proper hold. I, I don't know what it is. I've never because seen it. it looks like an exercise. It looks I've like never, you're at like a dance test. I don't know what it is about this team, but I zone in and out, in and out when they're going. Like it's. And when Barbara cheering is pulling more energetic focus, you know that there's a disconnect with what's happening on the ice. Does she just soak up all the charisma in the rink? Yes. Is that the. She does in the competitive rink. Her clapping, her cheering, her bending the knees, her moving. You watch Barbara even when they're skating. That's what I did in Canada. I was like, I had to remind myself to watch the actual skating that was happening on the ice. Um, I don't know if because she doesn't have enough room in the training ice because she's so big and performative that like they can't find any room for theirs. I don't know. But the judges, I don't know. They were pretty, they're pretty nice to these Italians. Now, how about Hawaii and Baker making their season debut? Okay, can I ask you questions? Let's let's talk this out. So, and I'm gonna. It's Did not, you have asked me these in advance, or what are we asking? No, here? it's more fun if I don't. Um, it's one of those things that when I would see them live at a nationals, I do see that they are not as slick as a Madison and Evan, or as big and powerful as a Madison and Zach. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that there is like an international reluctance to going with them. Sometimes the scores imply that judges tolerate their presence in the top, however many, instead of welcoming there. And so, you know, we have the Spanish team, Sarah Hurtado beating them here. And I look to some of their individual elements and I think this is so good why, why do, is the general public consensus that we tolerate them instead of enjoy them? I can't figure it out because well, I enjoy them. I really enjoyed this free dance. And I thought- I did, I did too. Rhythm dance was fun and I really liked the free dance. She was dripping in Matthew Carone. Oh my God. I mean, the, the music was fabulous. It looked, it was elevating. It was maybe, 
the best free dance Marie France has put together this season, if we're really mm. being honest. I thought it nailed the assignment more than anything. I think Marie France has had a tough season compared to her usual standard, if we're being honest. Listen, if Chalk and Bates have to have a meeting, if the astronaut and the alien is the way to go, I, look, I think Marie France's best work, Hawaii and Baker's free dance and Smart and Diaz. If I'm, yes, yes. Right? Those to me are the winners. Yeah. Um, also, you have to worry about Marie France. Like, you know, are they coming to the end of their dominance for right now? For well, right now. Which, every I, school, every school falters. Remember, Marina Zueva was the HBIC and she fell, you know, slowly because she went from Merrill and Tessa to the Shibutanis, but you know, the Marie France had her rise. Who do they have next year? Yeah. I know Chaka Bates say right now that they're continuing, but. Yeah, do the Spanish continue? Do the Canadians continue? I mean, you have the young Canadian champion or the young Canadian. Yeah, but are they ready to be on the podium? Right. Against Diana right. Davis, who's getting right. all the money. Right? It's true. It's true. You start to look at what does the international field look like next year? Who's moving to Montreal? Who's right? Who's in it? I think for Hawaii and Baker, it's really tough. They've had a lot of injuries and inconsistency throughout their career. They were kind of stuck in that fourth place position for a while. And I think that the, it can almost like just looking at like what happened with like Jenny Kirk's career, anyone like when you when you start to feel that there's like a strangulation on the top that you're never gonna break through, right? Like you're waiting your turn and you don't know if it's gonna be you. I do think it ultimately kills your like competitive maturity and development. Like when you just don't think that there's gonna be the push for you, even if you do, I think it's- If you believe like, there's a ceiling to your- Yeah, your I think potential. that when you're in the training rink every day, I think it saps you, I, I do. Um, and I know ice dance historically had people would wait their turn, but then we've seen more movement. But it, there, and I think that it, some of it was just a perfect storm. There were so many people ahead of them. You know, they don't have the biggest size difference of all time. That's not helping them. They have to work on their power and their skating skills, which they didn't have. There's just a lot of really good teams too that each have something unique and different. So. Then it comes down to material. Then it comes down to who's the push for, right? And sometimes it just happens that there's two Spanish teams and there's like a war going on for that Spanish judge and that team. If there was one Spanish team, maybe Hawaiian Baker would have an easier time climbing, right? Like in a normal world, we would not be so focused on Hurtado or Kamiya, like in, if she wasn't against Martin Diaz, we wouldn't right. care. Right. But the fact that there are two interesting Spanish teams against each other, I mean- Basically getting the same scores, yeah. 0.25 apart in the race for the Olympics, would you care as much? Right. No, but there's just been like overshadowed. The fact that there's like three North American teams going for a bronze medal, and then you have Italians, you have Stepanova and Buchan, you have other people coming up it's like they haven't been special enough. And, and granted, okay, they did their own thing for a while. They weren't getting anywhere. With, I know, it's right? unfortunate because I liked their material back then. Then you moved to a center where like, what number are you on the totem pole? You don't have a judge to offer, okay? Let's be right. honest. When you're an ice dancer and you're going to any of these schools, Julen, Spielbond, you're bringing potential for a judge for these people that helps other teams. I mean, it's your currency in this sport and right. it's the way the game is played. And I don't know that they have anything to trade beyond their own talent. And Do you think they have anything to worry about as far as on the big team is concerned? Of course, because they haven't had the training or the mileage. So you think, you know, mistakes are always more possible. We saw Green and Parsons fall on the exit of a lift recently. But I think that the material should, to me, it has the experience, it has the, um, the nuance, it has that extra finesse that Green and Parsons don't have. And when we saw their free dance, I thought they looked ready. 
they look like mm. Olympians to me. I would, yeah, I would send them and maybe talk to the teams about like who's going to Worlds. If Hawaii and Baker aren't going to continue, maybe you send Brian Parsons, or if Hubble and Donahue aren't going to go to, you know, you have to like start to position it. Um, for the future, but at the same time, you also want to get three spots for next year. So maybe you make Graham Parsons the alternate, or you just trade them with Hawaii and Baker. But I think there are different things that you could do to make that happen. You know, I, I think that- Yeah, because for a while, a while people were talking about like Ponomarenko and stuff like that. To me, there's terrible. still yeah. such a divide between him and John Luke, to me. They've but, had a terrible, terrible season. And, yeah. Um, who knows why? I mean, <laughs> and I, again, I really thought Caitlin and John Luke might be out of the whole thing after they had withdrawn from the first event. So it was nice to see them here and looking basically mm -hmm. strong. I don't know. To me, I thought, okay, they should be fine. To, like, should be in the event. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that their overall skating skills are just a little stronger at this point than Green and Parsons and the overall maturity. Yeah. But again, the judges don't seem to reward what what I seem to so clearly be seeing. But this is also their first outing and they're going against teams that this is their fifth outing or their fourth. I mean, the mileage yeah. matters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, yeah, because when you saw Sarah go after them, like they seemed twice as fast. Yeah. And yeah, Sada has as confident. twice the charisma. <laughs> right? right. I mean, right. And performative out energy. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not a political push behind them the way there is behind Sada to get to the Olympics. And yeah. they're in their coach's homeland, honey. Okay, yeah. so. But we have France... been to the Olympics. That's what I always have to remember. Like Spartan Diaz have not represented Spain at the Olympics. No, so. they haven't. And they're 0.25 away. I know. Between and the material two. to me is is like there's no basis of comparison. I am so into the Spartan Diaz material over I know, it's going to be a nail biter because I know Spartan Diaz, they're having a great season, right? But it's almost as though the Grand Prix events where they did well don't count, as we learned it on Edge to how they're making the team. They have to do well at nationals now and Europeans and to add those right. together. And remember when there was all of the controversy with the judge that got, it's going to come down to a nail biter. I mean, yeah. you think you would think, right? Like Smart and Diaz have had this great season, but you look at the scores. And the coaches, you're literally, again, you're going to divide that panel. It's going to come down to one. It's going to come down. You, you can't make an error. The twist, right. I mean, the pressure. I'm so excited for Spanish nationals. I'm so excited for Europeans to see yeah. how this is going to look. They're both phenomenal dance teams. It's like, they're both maximizing what they can do. Sada is giving us yeah. all of the expression. The sword fight at the end of Smart and Diaz is fantastic. And right. it's a great battle royale. I mean, think about it. We are like so concerned about, I don't know, the ninth place dance team. Like what, what is this, what is this going to do again? Okay. And which of those ninth place dance teams is going? <laughs> right? Like what is yeah. this? But it's fun yeah. and their personalities and I'm into Agreed. it. And Agreed. how about the ice dance final? Because this matters more than just setting I up. I was thinking the same thing, unlike any other discipline where there are egregious absences and you're aware, like, does this count? Does this one not count? The dance final, you're like, mm -hmm, this will be very interesting. So for one and two, I mean, I think everyone thinks it's Papadakis and Cicerone against Sinitz and Katsalapov unless Vicky and Nikki, you know, <laughs> deliver. in the Sit down after a lift, yeah. Not that Hubble and Donahue have never, you know, Fallen yeah. on a choreographic at a grand prix final in Chan. Yes. Yeah. So you've got Hubble and Donahue, Gillis and Poirier, Chalk and Bates, and then Guinard and Fabri. Yeah. Who's your money on for the bronze? Uh, who who do I, who would I see as the bronze medalist, or who do I think will be the bronze? Medalist? Who do you think will be the bronze medalist? Canada. They've got nothing else to trade. Okay. They can I trade it if they have how many judges they have the final. Okay. And their scores seem to be pretty high. The judges, 
I don't know because I almost wonder if you're pushing like a Russian situation or if you're pushing another team that's outside of the North Americans, also like, you know, the Canadians don't pose any threat to the silver medal position, I believe. You, you know? can support everyone in every discipline. Oh my God, I'd be making more alliances than on Big Brother, okay? I would be <laughs> naming them like all the squads, okay? This, Julie because Chen- who do you think, who do you think is gonna be third? I think it, I think according to material and skating seals, it should be Hubble and Donahue. It should be Hubble and Donahue. The Janet Jackson is a little cringy for me, but yeah. I think that they're but overall- so is the Elton John in its own way. So yes. it's like, oh, oh, oh. I think that the overall quality of the Hubble and Donahue free dance to me has enough interesting elements in there. Piper and Paul are the most consistent. And the least polarizing actually somehow in that free dance. It's so like, just like basic that it's actually the least offensive. I, I want to think that Hubble and Donahue are going to pull it out, right? I think the, if it's I, judged fairly, I see them as third. But I think- It depends it how confident they are and how in their heads they are. They have the skating ability to go out and do it. Do they have the mental ability to go out and nail it? That is my question. Hmm. Because I think that there is as much pressure here, again, talking about it's the end of your career, it's do or die. We've entered the situation where are they gonna be Olympic medalists or not? And how hmm. much does this really, because this is again, this is the difference between ice dance and all of the other disciplines. The other you know disciplines what else it sets up? Four years ago, remember Hubble and Donahue won the nationals. It's a miracle, right? But they didn't get to do the team event because the Shibitani's medaled at the Grand Prix final and as World Medal, and they had the ability to pick whether or not they wanted to do one portion of the team event or two portions, right? Hubble and Donahue don't have an Olympic medal because the Shibs had the decision opportunity to make. Now, if you're an athlete and you know that your social media brand is your currency for shows, for contracts, for your future career. This team event is about more than just a medal. It's also about your exposure on television, how many times you're in, in it. Look about how Adam's followers grew. Every time you're on TV, every time you're competing, it, it, it's a new world we live in, right? Where Instagram yeah. followers mean a lot, right? And it's your team opportunity for a medal. And Hubble and Donahue have had a bitter rivalry with Chalk and Bates forever. They could potentially, because think about it, let's say Nathan wins here, he would get the first choice for what he wants to do, whether or not he wants to do one event or both events. If Vincent medals, he would get the, likely get the second choice and get to you know, do that program. Unfortunately for Jason Brown, the way the cookie crumbles. If they're, oh, if they're, de if they're deciding yeah. it the same way, this is how it went four years ago, right? Maybe they'll add the scores together, who knows? Maybe we don't have a lady in the event, so, Frankly, they shouldn't even be relevant to this discussion. Then it comes down to the dance team. If you're Hubble and Donahue and you feel that you have been screwed over politically for years and you win the bronze medal here, are you going to choose to do one event in the team event or both? Are you going to help out your training partners who you probably weren't happy that they came to Montreal? Are you going to choose to do both for that extra experience, that extra boost to your career, that extra time on Olympic ice? and chance to have a moment. Well, I think a part of the big equation here too is when is the dance compared to the team? It's late, they have enough time. So if they have enough time, it does become a different scenario because I think about like the single skaters, for instance, like I would not want to do a short program, long program and turn around and then go do another short program and then another. You also, it's dance. You don't want to give the judges an opportunity to fall in love with anyone else, right? Like you want all the attention on me, honey. Love mm -hmm. me, love me, love me, right? You don't yeah, want- if to they feel that they can also, if their struggle in the past has been to focus and be clean, are you now going to ask them to do that four times well, instead of three? Or you have to think about it. You have to look at your mental preparation. Is having more exposure to Olympic pressure a benefit to you? Because think about it, Virtue and Moyer were good in the team event. They were phenomenal in the individual event four years ago. 
Same thing happened in Sochi. Remember, they almost they struggled on that first lift a little bit. It wasn't mm-hmm. their best. They brought it. Now, granted, I think that the team event even solidified the way that the fix was in for yes. uh, the final. But I think if you look, if you're Humble and Donahue, you might want that extra time to work through Nerves. an Olympic skate on ice. And again, I would imagine if you are the USFS, like it does help to have more exposure to two male skaters and two ladies skaters. Well, I just don't trust the ladies, right? Unless the, unless, the pairs? unless nationals happens and they think Alyssa is the way to go for both, I personally maybe would go like Alyssa and Mariah. Because you can only have people share two different disciplines. Right. Right. And Mariah's been better in the free. And frankly, if the U.S. makes the free, the worst you can do is fifth. So Mariah Bell's novice ladies content, not novice ladies in Russia, novice ladies in the U.S. content without any triple triples in the free. Clean with good GOE becomes a much higher score. I would let the other countries falter. Right. Because Alyssa might fall on a triple axel. Right. So I would split the men and the ladies, let Alexa and Brandon do both in the pairs, and maybe have Hubble and Donahue do both. That's... There's a lot of factors at play. I don't know why there's the limitation on how many people you can have in each discipline. It makes it strategy and it makes it fun for us to discuss, but for the actual... I mean, they all sit in the kiss and cry anyway, which like... Come on, think about those skaters that are in the kiss and cry for their like moment of TV time to be like, we're all on the team, but we don't get a medal. <laughs> like, right, ow, exactly. Ow, yeah. Horrible, okay. Yeah, yeah, weird. Horrible. Yeah, I, I'll be intrigued how each country sort of- You don't like these them. replacements. You don't like these games. I could, it's written all over your face when I'm like thinking about- Yeah, because well, there's just so many factors to play in. And it's just so it will each decision would play out totally different for someone else. It's like when they're like, are they going to start with their most difficult element in the free skate, or are they going to start with a double axle to warm up? Like, I don't know. The team event, like you're saying, could help Hubble and Donahue get their feet wet, like mm-hmm. work out some jitters in what's kind of a safe place. But think um, about it. But they'll likely be going against Piper and Hall in both portions of the team event. Again, so maybe so it could don't solidify. Want to yeah. Maybe you don't want to, depending on how the final goes, maybe you don't want to say, oh, they're going to definitively beat us. Because when Virtue and Moyer lost to Davis and White in both portions of the team event, it was kind of over. Right. Because again, the variety of what can happen within the program, not so great in ice dance. Yes, people can make Actually, a fall, with but- Hubble and Donahue doing an overhead lift where his arms have to stay bent, It's Hubble and Donahue, the twizzles, the risky. But again, I think on paper, uh, I would have them third. Now let's see what happens. Now I'm more excited for the team of them than I realize because it's really, it's about. And I'm excited for that bronze medal there. I'm excited for like a Japan Canada situation. I'm ready. To see what happens. Oh, we didn't talk about the ladies' field. It's Valieva, Shervakova, Tukdemisheva. Gauri Sakamoto, Maya Rome, and Aljona Kosternaya. So Kauri, Kauri, was that listed in the order of points they achieved? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Can... So Kauri was safely in. It's not like Trusova would have taken it away from Kauri, although Kauri wouldn't probably have won NHK if yeah. Trusova and Daria had been competing. Because Co- I really Kosternaya anticipated. Benefited. Kosternaya benefited here, true. She was the one that benefited, okay. How will she finish at the event? Can she get a pewter? I mean, would that be a win for her? Can she? She should beat Maya, but she might not. You don't know. Yeah. What was your moment? Who was the first alternate for that? Young Yu. Young Yu. Fascinating. Forgotten Young Yu, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Um, hmm. Intriguing. When is, where are the finals this year? I it doesn't say. Is it, it, uh, wait. <laughs> but it's, it's always just I, it, I thought it was Italy, but they obviously. Maybe it is Italy. Italy. I don't know. I, I have not thought about that. I, I'm not Isn't going. Isn't that weird? Because I just think it's. The, it's on my YouTube TV. channel. That's It's on Peacock. The, um, <laughs> it's in Osaka. It's in, it's it is in Osaka. It's in Osaka. 
Okay. Except for the years that it was in Spain, and those seemed like really fun, event-filled. Yes, remember that? Because that's Barcelona. when Javi was still skating too, and then they just kept it the next year. It was amazing. Um, yeah, no, it should be very exciting. And I, I, I'll be intrigued after, of course, the, the Olympics happen for many reasons. <laughs> but one is to see how much this Grand Prix final really previewed it and how much it didn't. Because when I go back now to former year, like Grand Prix finals, and you see how much it had nothing to do with what happened at the Olympics, and sometimes it had everything to do with what was about to happen at the Olympics. Listen, so I'm, I'm Jonathan, saying, you could be Tessa Virtue and de dying a sad death at the Grand Prix final, or you could be Tessa Virtue on Scott's arms dying a triumphant death for Olympic yes, gold, baby. Exactly. The Grand Prix final see? could mean so much, okay? It sets the stage for what everyone changes. I mean, did you <laughs> see her? selling dry shampoo this week. That was the greatest commercial of all time. She has had the most interesting post-Olympic career, uh, marketing, uh, branding. Listen, she understood the value of being on TV for the team event, okay? Meryl just had those horrible Vera Bradley bags to be pushed. <laughs> Poor Meryl, okay, I mean. I mean, she's doing just fine. She should have gotten endorsement for latte art and sunset Instagram photos. I mean, she could have had a camera ad. Meryl should have gotten into photography herself, okay? Exactly, exactly. Although, you know, no one buys a digital camera anymore. So I digress. But, you know, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. She could have like, Meryl could have sold like Disney princess dresses. I don't know what the endorsement was, but you know what? Good for if Rachel Flack can do Colorado potatoes. Meryl yes, Davis. Thank you, Tara Mockman. That was <laughs> one of the greatest endorsements of all time that people are still talking. Rachel Flatt saying, any day without a spud is a duh. And like on the ice rink. And you're like, oh, The only this... cringier commercial is when Sean Johnson said, Ortega makes my tacos pop. I mean, that was <laughs> the worst <laughs> ad I have ever seen. Okay. <laughs> what was your moment of the week? Gosh, I, you know, I was even stalling because I was like, gosh, do you have one, Jonathan? Um, stalling, the show is a million hours long. I, I mean, know, as everyone will tell us and then, then complain that we didn't talk about every single skater ever. It's like um, longer than the Ken Burns Civil War documentary. I mean, come on. So, you you want to like all his stuff, but sometimes I'm like, I can't stop falling asleep halfway. I have fallen asleep. The Roosevelt through. is, I love it. It's so calming and I fall asleep so much watching it. <laughs> So soothing the story of Roosevelt. Um, let me see. I know, I'll, I'll never get to the bottom of Eleanor and Hick. What was the real, what was the real tale mm, that we both know? Mm. She was what the real story of Hillary and Huma? I don't know, anyway. And Eleanor with that put on speaking voice, so peculiar that they had to- that And they were cousins, the they were cousins. Very interesting, yes. <laughs> to each his own, I guess. Um, gosh, I still don't have a moment of the week. What's your Oh moment? my God, the moment of the week is Kazuki Tomono living his best life to the end of La La Land, Jonathan, okay? Okay, I like that, I like that. Um, and your moment of the week is Tuk Dimisheva. What are you talking about? She got I do you like Tuk Dimisheva, which halfway through when she just like stops the program and it's like, hey, you, oh, you guys are here. Does everyone want to start having fun with me? And the audience resoundingly replies, yes, we do, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh. And then when she does that, even as a no to the bird program, we just love it. So love more her. props to her. All this. We love her. Us. We love you. Hold it, Edge, and look sexy, everyone. We'll see you next week for our Grand Prix final preview. Bye. Woo! Guys.